Hi, i3 World Forum Internet of Things 2021. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not uh, part of the venue. I'm presenting from home in base in France, and my name is Philippe Koval, and I will share some tips and tricks about uh, NetX uh, real time operating system, which is uh, used uh, in IoT. But I will present today something using a practical approach. So let me introduce myself. I'm Philippe Koval, I'm a software engineer based in uh, Rennes, France. And I've been involved into open source for a long time now and currently part of Mozilla Web's program. I'm interested in uh, Internet of Things and operating systems. So I've been involved on uh, open source projects supported by the industry. Uh, when I was at uh, working for Intel OTC, I work on Tizen operating system. And uh, then I joined a Samsung open source group uh, where I work on IoTBT, the framework from Open Connectivity Foundation. You can contact me at pearl.org slash rzr and uh, there you can find some all my contacts and previous material or video and demos of uh, my uh, current activities. I am interested in uh, free software, Internet of Things, uh, open source hardware and uh, human machine interactions. So I will show you this uh, short uh, demonstration and uh, then I will explain how it was possible. So what you see here is a vehicle, uh, um, an electric vehicle which is at Rennes University and we used to act uh, on this device uh, from time to time. But uh, last time due to uh, lockdown restriction, it was not possible. So I suggested to uh, we can do something together online by joining this uh, virtual world. So what you see on the screen is uh, Mozilla Hubs. So it's a shared environment where uh, you can uh, interact uh, you, from your browser or your VR headset. It's uh, in all uh, 3D uh, simulation and you have a multi-user so you can chat uh, with your friends and you can also create a new uh, assets so you can import some uh, new uh, shapes or videos or any kind of media. So here I'm importing uh, the 3D content, uh, which is a, a, a model of this uh, open source vehicle I, I show at the beginning of this video. So you can uh, then use your pointer and decide to um, change uh, some attribute of your object. So the interesting hack I can explain here that from the web browser you can access to some properties of your uh, object. So we can access this uh, using a query by the class of the object and then you can display one of its property like uh, the scale factor. So here x, y, z is uh, at scale, unit scale, so I can decide to scale it by 15 and uh, it will be updated in, uh, in the browser. So that's a multi-shared environment, so this means it's uh, appearing at the same uh, scale on different, uh, on different uh, views. So the user can decide then to move the position attribute by picking and moving the objects. So that's how it works. Um, that's interesting, but it's um, it can be a, a bit limited because it's all static. So what we can do next is try to add some life. So first, let me share my, my camera. So it's a webcam uh, looking at my, uh, at my desk. So what you see here, is me moving my trackball, it's in, updated in real time and uh, I can decide to change the size of the object move it a bit uh, backwards this uh, vehicle and what you see uh, next to my uh, hand is a uh, a Lego toy. So the purpose of this demonstration is to use uh, the uh, um, this embedded uh, uh, device. So it's a development board. So it's an NXP 3D board, and I will explain 
how to make it run uh, using Notex and to make something useful out of it. So this is Notex uh, configuration uh, screen. So you can select uh, the right uh, uh, board so NXP and then uh, I can show that you have also some sensor support and because on this uh, board there is uh, this uh, motion sensor which is a combination of uh, an accelerometer and a magneto, magneti, magne, magnetic sensor. So from the device when you run it you can check the version so it's not X. Uh, this is not the latest version but it's close to uh, the current one and then I made a simple application which is uh, just uh, updating the value of my sensor so the accelerometer and the magnetic sensor so they are updated in a, in a JSON stream and uh, what I can do from this is try to share this to the outside world so to do this I'm using a Unix pipe so in this case this is a uh, Notex pipe and uh, I can decide to uh, run my application which is outputting the JSON uh, stream to this pipe so it's running in the background then I can set up my network so it's like a Linux system you can just run the regular Linux command and uh, then I have my network established so I can decide to uh, send the stream uh, to a specific IP address to my uh, from my pipe. So it's display on the screen. I have another application which is uh, forwarding this uh, JSON stream to a WebSocket. So as I shown previously, we can change the scale of uh, a property. So this means we can do a little bit more than this, uh, like uh, update uh, the position of this uh, this object. So I'm pasting now a, uh, a code, which is uh, updating in real time the position of my uh, my model. So I can move it in reality, and it will be updated in real time. That's uh, the principle of digital twins. This means a virtual and physical environment tied together and updated in the in same in a real time. So it's isolating a little bit because probably I should use some Kalman filter or another way to prevent this small oscillation, which is caused by the sensor. So everything has been uh, contributed to uh, uh, Natex and I will explain each uh, each part of the contribution in the following uh, demonstration. So this demonstration is illustrating my uh, ongoing Web of Twins experiments. So I've been interested in making uh, physic um, digital twins, which mean um, 3D models and uh, bound to real physical device. So I will not explain too much about it today, but uh, feel free to reach my links. You will find some updates. And also it's uh, illustrating about uh, Mozilla Hubs, which is a distributed online multi-user environment that can be convenient uh, in a situation where people can not get in the same physical place. They can rely on tools like this. So it was uh, something I wanted to explore. And from this uh, quick and dirty demonstration made for um, some online hackathon, I decided to try to upstream the most I can into uh, several projects. So I can share some hint about this. Uh, try to make your change the most uh, minimal possible and try to listen to feedback. So this means if your code is smaller, it will be faster to review. This means you will be, um, you can be more reactive and try to fix it uh, progressively. So I don't remember exactly, but it took me like uh, maybe uh, 20 change, 20 change and uh, among a week or two, and it was already, it was all merged. So that's so how I proceed uh, last year. So let me explain about Notex uh, reporting system. So it's a project committed to comply the existing standards. So it's not reinventing the wheel. It's uh, uh, trying to uh, support uh, POSIX API. You probably know from 
Unix based system and also C and C which is uh, the standard form C, C programming. It's a file based uh, operating system like uh, most Unix. This means all device can be uh, uh, interacted through like if there were a file in a dev device folder. It supports also networking connectivity, so it's using BSD socket API and uh, using the micro IP IP stack. So that's uh, something which has been released by Gregory Nutt uh, in year 2007. That's pretty long time ago now, but it has been recently. Uh, incubated uh, by Apache Foundation, so it's under the Apache infrastructure and under Apache license. So that's something, something interesting from the sustainability of the project. So this project is a base of other projects. So the first one I knew it was Tizen RT, which is also another project from Samsung. And I know it's also used for PX4, which is a drone platform. And also, it's uh, already it's used by uh, Sony Espresso's uh, um, framework and uh, this platform. And I know that uh, Sony tried to upstream everything possible in Nutex. So to get started, that's pretty uh, easy. You just need to grab the code. So it's all open source. It's hosted uh, on GitHub. So there is two repository. You need to download the first one is source code of the operating system Nutex, and the second one, which is optional, which is uh, just a demo application. So, if you just want to use uh, the base uh, base uh, operating system, there is a few application like uh, the uh, NS NSH, which is a Nutex shell where you can run a couple of commands. But if you want more advanced application, you need to uh, pick them from the apps folder. So you just need to pick to clone uh, both folder and the make file will be updated because I will find the apps uh, folder just under the NetX one. So for the documentation, let me suggest uh, to uh, uh, read uh, the online uh, web portal. Everything is uh, hyperlinked, so it's easy to easier to uh, to read. And if there is any issue to be fixed, uh, you can fix them um, in uh, uh, embedded um, in the in source the uh, documentation documentation folder. So it's using restricted text, but it's easy to. Um, so it's plain text, easy to edit. And something I should mention that uh, there is also a Netex channel from Alan, Alan from I Alan from Brazil, and uh, he shared a lot of uh, tips on different features of uh, Netex on different boards. So that's a good uh, entry door to get into the project. So now let me mention about. Uh, which board are supported. So there is a board above uh, two, 200, that's a lot. You can list uh, all those boards by uh, running this tool configure sh dash l like list. It will list all the configuration of all the boards. So each configuration is a predefined configuration of the environment, which feature are enabled or not, and a different uh, way to build the firmware. So there is um, at least one for each board and uh, it's supporting different architecture for 8 to 64 bits uh, all the famous ones are there like ARM or Intel and also RIX-5 which is gaining a lot of traction and I know also there is a simulator if you don't have the device you can try to play with a simulator I uh, didn't uh, really um, experiment it, but I suppose it's something based on virtual machines, so you can play with this in to get started into the project. So I've been using the NXP Freedom Board, also known as a EFRDMSK64F. So this board is quite powerful, uh, not powerful enough to run a full Linux system, but for Netex it's pretty, uh, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty over featured. So it has a uh, 262k of RAM, and uh, there is also one megabyte of flash, so you can load a lot of code and data. 
and to get started you can uh, just have a look at the readme file which is in the uh, freedom board uh, folder there is uh, some instruction and to to configure the build you need to run the configure script with uh, freedom k64f and nsh configuration nsh stands for Nutex shell so if you manage to build it using make you will find uh, it will produce uh, a firmware which is uh, about around uh, 82k of bytes so that's uh, quite small and if you copy this uh, binary to the to the um, to the device using the USB mass storage it will boot on it or you can use uh, another external flash but anyway everything is detailed on the main documentation there is no need to uh, document it more and here is a commit uh, reference about some configuration change if you are curious so the board is located into uh, so it's not part of uh, it's a port uh, port effort so it's not part of Nutex uh, operating system and each port is uh, in into its own directory so you have the readme file the configuration which is inspired by uh, which is using a key config like Linux so you have a dev config file which is listing all the configuration flag and the most important uh, file besides the make file is uh, this uh, bring up uh, source uh, so this file will tell you what is going on when the the, the system is, is is loading so you have all the configuration of each peripheral and uh, each uh, um, feature is in uh, another C file that's how it works so let's look about uh, i square c support which is a bus for uh, using sensor I've been uh, shown in the previous video so there is a C file which is which is built if the i2c um, configuration is enabled and it will register the uh, i2c device in the bring up uh, uh, source code so it's, there is a function called i2c dev initialize and it will uh, register the device so this can be tested uh, using the i square c tool and of course you need to add support for the board about uh, uh, kinetis uh, cpu which is the one used in this uh, board so to verify it you can use this uh, i square c tool that's something you can just type from the shell it will list you if the bus is present and if you look li list uh, all the um, what's in on, on this bus uh, from until uh, this address it will list you something at uh, address 1d and if you use uh, i square c get function probably you can read and uh, see some value so 0x1d is uh, this uh, free number uh, uh, onboard sensor this sensor module is called uh, FXOS8700 uh, so it's a module composed of uh, two uh, inputs one three axis accelerometer and three axis magnetometer so you can do some sensor fusion if you want to have something based on the both uh, input but uh, in this case I'm just reading them separately so everything is detailed in this document so this is data sheet if you want to implement the driver this is uh, the way to go so you can look at this document it will explain all the structure and all the the data and how it works and you can also add a look at uh, other driver and try to get something inspired by others if you don't know where to get started so to implement the drivers you need to create a, a, a file so in this case I made a, a driver for a sensor so it's located in the driver sensor folder and there there is one function called register which is uh, um, uh, containing a function register driver which is uh, assigning a file which is Dave Excel 0 which is a virtual file which is a uh, assigned by different operation of the driver so that's another trick structure you need to implement read write function 
and uh, to enable this uh, you need to uh, select uh, the sensor FX uh, OS in uh, configuration so here is a commit if you want to see details so this can be done uh, at the uh, operating system but it should be done also for the board so for registering this uh, onboard sensor you need to uh, also register this uh, using the same function into uh, i square c uh, initialization and next you need to uh, enable networking to share this data to the outside world so using menu config you need to select uh, a few uh, uh, feature like uh, DHCP for instance that's something that will enable other features like uh, we need uh, TCP for our netcat application I will explain later and uh, once everything is uh, configured when you run it and you get into your NSH shell you can run the if config function and uh, it will display your IP address. In this case, it's not assigned, so you need to make a DHCP request using the renew command. And then, if you run the, the if config uh, command, it will be updated and you'll see the new IP address. So now you can add this uh, Netcat application. So, if you don't know Netcat, that's uh, an utility uh, you will find on most uh, Unix systems. It's uh, something really simple to uh, share. Uh, so it can run as client or server and you can stream data from the client to the server. And uh, it's straightforward to use. So in, you can use this as a, an example, like if I run netcat minus L on my server, let's say my Linux system, and if from NetX I run netcat, the address of my server, the right port, and let's say, a file it will then read the file and uh, write into the socket and in the, uh, uh, the server side it will display the content of the file so to do this it's in the application folder and from the configuration menu you can you should need to select this uh, net util netcat application and uh, if you can do this, you can do something interesting also, you can create a pipe. So a Unix pipe is something which is not a file, it's just a way to make, um, to eat the output of one program to feed the input of another program. So in this case, I am creating my pipe using make FIFO, this means first in, first out, and then this uh, sensor application, which is uh, producing the JSON stream, is writing inside the FIFO, inside the pipe. So it's the pipe is consuming data from this uh, sensor uh, program. And then if I run netcat uh, to my server and reading from the pipe, this means it will uh, consume data from the pipe and it will be shared to the network that's simple as this so that's pretty similar to what you use uh, on linux you're probably using using the pipe symbol but it works the same that's the same concept so for summary uh, let me recap so netx is uh, supporting uh, current standards so it's very similar to what you know from linux if you are a linux developer and it's a base to adapt to new low-end hardware like uh, microcontroller. So you can need to uh, implement the board bring up to, to make the system uh, supporting Notex. That's uh, something easy if you are um, if you know about uh, the initialization of the boards. If you are not uh, very um, informed, you can try to understand how it works with the same generation of uh, the board. And uh, you can also look at uh, how to implement uh, drivers for peripherals or others. That's much simpler. And of course, it's supporting application, and uh, you can load them, and you can also send them together using using uh, pipes and other tricks like I have shared. Of course, if you're curious about uh, related uh, works. Uh, this is my home page and I have uh, made uh, some update about my Web of Twin experiments and uh, some previous presentation about uh, um, low hand devices, IoT and also VR and other experiments. 
um, the video will be, be played back online bye bye that's all i wanted to share to you today thanks a lot So if you're curious about uh, why it, I try to um... So if you want to learn more, of course there is no text but uh, from me there is my home page where you can see uh, some other works like uh, what I've been doing with uh, Web of Twins experiments you can see other demonstration or the part of the UI part for using VR world and so on and also you can share you can look at other presentation I've shared before so for freedom board uh, you know there is a little challenge so let me first introduce my DIY pin cap device so it's a pinball simulator uh, that's something I made uh, during the uh, first lockdown so it's quite fun to play and uh, I can you can also run it because it's all free software and uh, originally it was built on Emilia Pinboard and uh, you can use um, a keyboard for controlling events and I made this little hack using USB mouse to uh, control the flippers and there is two mouse one for each side and uh, you can also use a middle button for the plunger and then I made some kind of combination of buttons to produce uh, those nudge effects but it's not really um, intuitive so I thought it could be improved uh, using uh, this uh, sensor onboarded on this uh, NXP board so I prototyped uh, something using uh, embed which is uh, another reacting operating system that's something uh, easy and i was able to make uh, this uh, usb device because it's act like a keyboard and there is only two key like uh, the edge right or left so that's something that can be redo redone using notex and uh, to do this uh, we need to get into uh, USB support for gadgets and uh, host devices so that's something can be improved and uh, if you do let me know that's something I'll be curious to see hi before this presentation uh, is over I want to share again some of my links so on pearl.org slash rzr you will find all my contacts you can link me to uh, other uh, activity uh, feed i'm updating and uh, this presentation you're watching now uh, will be probably recorded but you can already check the slides on my presentations uh, page and uh, as you can see I made a lot of uh, demonstration and share the proof of concept also excuse me if the video is not uh, always the best quality but I wanted to, to share something as soon as got something working and if you're curious about my uh, web of twins uh, experiment and research uh, you can check this uh, web of twins uh, feed so I'm sharing some updates on my research so that's something I thought that could be valuable and specifically in a situation where people cannot uh, work together like they used to be before this uh, COVID-19 uh, change in history so I thought that using this kind of technology can be more natural and people can uh, try to interact without being in the same place so this means using uh, uh, something more natural to interact with computer and machines so I believe that the digital twins can be uh, useful in this context but there is also a lot of use cases I have also interest into a social web where people can interact and of course you can subscribe to see more videos uh, thanks a lot uh, this was the first time for me to be at this uh, event to be and not to, pre to be because I was presenting from home and uh, see you next time next place uh, whoever knows bye bye